Good morning. Well done for taking the first step to learning Unreal Engine by watching this video. And thank you for trusting me to guide you through it. Okay, so I'm gonna do a super quick introduction explaining how a few things are gonna work. But apart from that, this will be the only time I'll be talking about something which isn't related to a topic because I wanna get through these videos as quick as possible so you guys can be game developing as soon as possible. So just give me one minute of boring information and then we can get to the good stuff. So as you probably already figured out, this will be a 30 episode series. Each video will be straight to the point and under 15 minutes long. I wanted to do it this way so I don't waste any of your guys' time, but you can stick to the series, tackle one video a day, and then by the end of the 30 days, you're able to create your own games. I plan to release a video every two days, but I'm currently on holiday, so if I do slip up with that, I'm sorry, I'll release the video as soon as possible. By the end of this series, you can expect to know the essentials required to build your very first game. Don't get me wrong, Unreal Engine is an absolutely huge program, so you'll still be a beginner in the grand scheme of things. But I aim to teach you how the software works and the logic behind it, because once you know those two things, you can create almost anything. Just one more thing I wanted to say is that you won't remember everything I say in these tutorials. I'll be throwing an insane amount of information at you, so don't stress yourself out if you can't remember all of it. The way you learn is by repetition, so just try and take in what I say. If you can't remember it, flash back to the video where I said it and remind yourself, and then slowly you'll pick it up over time and you'll get a grasp of it all. So don't stress. Stick with me for 30 episodes and I will introduce you to the joys of game developing with Unreal Engine. Let's get into it. So, to install Unreal Engine, you first need the Epic Games Launcher. So it goes to the internet, time, type in Epic Games Launcher download, download that, and then you will get something that looks quite like this. So quick introduction to what this is. Uh, for those of you who have played Fortnite, this is where you can play Fortnite and stuff like that. Um, but what you want to focus on is the Unreal Engine section. So this is just uh, document information and stuff, updates. The Marketplace, is where you can actually purchase as assets. So when, you, when you're making a game, you have 3D models, things like that, uh, which you create. Uh, here you can buy them, saves you a load of time. I would recommend it, but um, think about what you're purchasing. Don't just go and purchase a load of stuff. So then you wanna go to library and here you can download the Unreal Engine software. So I'm currently installing 4.25 because that's what I'll be doing this tutorial on because it's the newest one at the moment. So install that and I'll see you guys when it's all installed. After you've opened up the software, you'll get a screen like this. Just click game because we'll start creating a game. And then here you can select your template. So basically all these are all the same thing. You're all running the same program, but it just gives you a different startup. So if you select the first person, you'll start with a gun where your camera's looking down the gun. Rolling, you'll be controlling a ball. Basically. They're all the same, but they change the character for you so it's quicker and you don't need to worry about that. But basically all it is is different camera angles and different control pieces. So for us, I'm gonna be doing this tutorial in third person template, so let's open that up. Um, so you don't really need to worry much about this. Uh, if you're a big coder, you'll be doing C++, but for this tutorial, I'll be focusing on blueprints. Apart from that, most of this is fairly self-explanatory. Name your project here and then click create projects. So one thing I wanted to mention before we get stuck in is engine version. When you begin a project, it's always best to stick with the engine version you started with. You can upgrade projects to a new engine release, but then sometimes you can get bugs or issues, so I wouldn't say it's really worth it. Stick with your engine version and you'll be good. You can upgrade them, but you can't downgrade them, so stick with it. So, when you open up your software, it'll look something like this. Uh, all a bit intimidating at first, but I promise you it's all pretty self-explanatory. So we've got the content browser. This is basically just like your file explorer. This is all the files that are currently loaded onto your project, such as images, materials, 3D models, etc. This is the details panel. Uh, when you click on an object, this will appear and it will show you details about that object, location, rotation, the scale, and other changeable properties down below. 
uh, world outliner. Simply put, this is basically a list of everything that's in your level. If you double click on something, it'll zoom out to where it is. And yeah, good, great way of keeping track of everything. This, this screen is the viewport. So this is how you look around your level and see your level, build your level, etc. Uh, this is the place actors. This is basically exactly the same as your files down here, but this is the essential bits of essential files that are built into the software, such as lighting, etc. So I'll just leave this up for a minute just so you can get a grasp of everything and then we will continue. So up here we have file edit window and help. Unreal Engine actually works through levels. Uh, you have multiple levels in one project because obviously you have lots of levels in a game. So instead of saving file, you just save level. If you wanted to actually change the entire project, you'd go a bit further down and do that here. Uh, in terms of edit, the only thing you really need to think about is project settings and plugins, but we don't really need to worry about those right now, so we can just leave that. And then window, if you're missing a, a window from the viewport, you can just add it here, like most of Microsoft Word tools, this is where you look. And finally, we have the toolbar above the viewport. The only thing you really need to worry about is save current. This is the same as saving a level up here. Settings, this adjusts your settings. If, you, if you're lagging or something, you can reduce your settings here so you've got lower quality. And then play, which you can play your level. You can actually play this in numerous modes, new editor, etc. But I'll be going into more detail on those things later. Just worry about understanding save, play, settings, and that's pretty much it. Okay, now let's go over some controls. So, if you've got your viewport here, if you hold the right mouse button and then use W, A, S, and D, you can fly around like some kind of a spacecraft. If you hold the middle mouse button and then move it around, you can move up without changing your angle. And then the left mouse button is changing the rotation. So I find the easiest way is just to hold the right mouse button down and use W, A, S, and D. Uh, you can always, always use the other arrow keys as well. I don't actually use those, but if you hold the right mouse button, you can use those as well. So all pretty self-explanatory. I'll put them up here so you can just get a quick grasp of that. Okay, the majority of the boring stuff is out the way now. Uh, let me show you how to actually build on a level. So you can take anything from here. Uh, you can go on to starter content, shapes, anything from content browser or the place actors and just click and drag it into your level. So you'll notice when you drag it in, you have a little arrow system. This is to move your object in either the Y, X or Z axis. Um, up here, you can change this to rotation or press E. Uh, it's good to get used to the hotkeys, so press E to switch to rotation where you can rotate it around and then scale, either click up here or press R and then you can scale the object by just clicking on the axis and then moving. So remember Q, no sorry, W to move, E to rotate, R to scale. Um, up here we also have the sort of grid locking things. So if you try and rotate, it will only do it in 10 degree chunks. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, etc. So you can either turn this off and then it will rotate in exactly whatever you want, or you can just change it. Uh, I'd recommend just changing it down to a lower one if you need to, because once you start getting down to the, the decimal places of rotation, it gets quite awkward to line up your different objects. Um, same thing with scaling and moving. Uh, this is just different snapping tools which are good to keep your level symmetrical and in line and stuff. Finally, we've got the little camera speed here where you can control how quick your camera moves around. One thing that's worth mentioning is that every object when you create it will have a center point. So this, this staircase, the center point is on the bottom left corner. So any, anything you do to it will go about from this corner. So rotate it, 
if you scale it, it'll do it from this corner. So everything happens about this point. So just remember that when you're working on things. This can be changed in 3D modeling softwares, but I'll go into that later. So just one more control that I need to leave, leave you with before I can let you do some messing around and stuff is the G key. So if you see here, we've got the, the light and all the background things which you wouldn't see in the game. If you press G, they'll actually hide. So you see what you would see in the game. But obviously when you're editing, you need to see them. So press G again to see them. Um, just one more thing to leave you with, to play around with is some of the properties. So if you mess around with learning the hotkeys, dragging some things in and out the level, then look under the properties section. You can change the location directly, uh, you can change the mesh, the material on the, on the object. Uh, you can simulate the physics, which will make it obviously sink to the ground. But you can turn off gravity, so it will be floating in the air, but it can be pushed around like you're in space. You can change the collision of the object. So just have a little play around with the software, mess around with it, and just get used to the controls and stuff. And yeah, I think that's everything for this video, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and it was a decent speed for you, but let me know if I should go quicker or slower. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.